someone asked if the Michael uh, Brooks clip at the end was kind of an example of false idol worship. Um, it's Ooh. it's complex. It's it's it is complex. I did put that. There's a lot of little things. I don't call them Easter eggs per se, but there's things that I do put in the video that I always look to see if people notice. Um, like for example, I do cut things really quick sometimes, and sometimes I don't. So uh, someone, I think it was Gigi, had commented. Uh, man, that mud wrestling scene, you really, it, it felt forever. I'm like, yeah, I wanted a lot of things to be uncomfortable to watch because you're watching them through a different lens now, an overly politicized lens. So now these things that were fun at one point in time, I mean, keep in mind, there was multiple mud wrestling bars in the 80s. I want to say maybe up until the 90s in Los Angeles on the, on the Hollywood Strip. Not only that, don't forget the freaking urban cowboy popularity of the oh. uh, the uh, what are they called the uh, electric horses. What are they called? I don't even things? know what they're called. I call them John John Travolta. You know, it's really fascinating, right? One of the consequences of doing this show, um, and really one of the consequences of doing political writing for me, but really the combination of the both, is that in the current political moment of what we have deemed shout out to guest uh uh, uh anton jager who came up with the term mm -hmm. hyper politics the period of hyper politics that really comes about after the rise of bernie sanders and uh and trump and you know everybody's a socialist now or young, young people at least everyone's a marxist everyone's a ml everyone's a this everyone's a that right because both of us are older and even though i'm a little older than you mm -hmm. When I reflect on the sheer political destitution that existed in the 80s and 90s and the millennium, as much as I had fun and enjoyed the 80s and the 90s and whatever, right? You know, I love the music of the 70s. I even mm -hmm. love some of the hip hop of the '80s and the '90s. I love all of a lot of the movies and the pop culture all that time. And as fraught as the current moment is, I would not want to trade the current rise of socialist popularity in American consciousness for the good times and fun I had in those periods of post-politics or anti-politics yeah to be absolutely quite honest i yeah you know i'm 53 years old as jason knows mm -hmm. and I, I started college in 1986. it's going to blow people's mind I actually told when, them almost when that video starts in 85 with fair right. donahue yeah y'all gotta remember right I pledged a fraternity in, in 1987 as a freshman. Most of the guys who mentored me in college are guys who right now are in their late 50s, mm -hmm. in their early 60s, right? So for me, as old as some people think I am, when I was in college, up until maybe my junior year, I was always like the youngest guy in the crew. And one of the reasons it's hard for when people come call me like, oh, you're the gray beard, you're the old man, is that in my formative teenage years, I was always being mentored by guys who were like four, five, three, five, six, seven years older than I was, right? And one of the reasons why that had a significant impact on my life is that I'm the oldest son in my family. I never had an older brother. So I benefited from having all of these older big brothers. But mm -hmm. one thing that I realized in dealing with them now, most of them have profoundly reactionary, shitty pro-black politics. Mm -hmm. That don't challenge capitalism, mm -mm. that don't challenge class, mm -mm. and don't really challenge empire significantly, but still, are considered quote unquote down or deep brothers because they posture pro black. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, again, back to the whole, you know, double meaning of a lot of the clips that are in there. I, I started that whole thing off with Farrakhan for a, a very specific reason, because to this day, Farrakhan in in the wide range of the black community is looked at as like kind of the definition of woke or pro-black or kind of a positive figure, mainly because a lot of us have friends or family that have gone maybe in the in the carceral system and some have come out um in the nation of islam and, and there's a positive sometimes a positive uh aspect to that to that uh turnaround um so i remember very vividly the million man march i went to the million man march there you go i mean it was it was a big deal I mean, yo, let me tell y'all something. Like, there was a period up until the contemporary moment on the East Coast. I can't, obviously, we couldn't do that for West Coast Brothers because it's a whole so far away. If you were from, like, the Northeast and you and people asked you if you went to the Million Man, Man March and you said no, like, yo, you legitimately, like, lost credibility with a lot of folks. Mm-hmm. Folks legit we were like, yo, you didn't go to the march? What? Yo, it wasn't until, let me tell you something. There was one thing I read. Shout out to Adolf Reed. There was one thing I read in class notes. That when I read that shit about the mere mad march, that whole, the whole significance of that march just went, <laughs> I mean, Reed has a line yeah. in class notes where he said I don't think in any other time in history we've seen a million men come together to protest themselves <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of black right wingers that were at the million man march that use that as a sign of uh, validity of their blackness. Like I was at the Million Man March. Ergo, that is why I say these. That's why I'm so entrenched in this pull up your pants rhetoric. But the, the, to I was also very close. I was very very close. Very 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 close to cutting in a a, a joke clip that a show that I was a fan of back in the '90s called Mr. Show did where they were mocking that episode of Donahue where Farrakhan is defending some really horrible comments that he had made, um, yeah. calling Hitler a great person and- um, His high holiness, the right Reverend Raleed Kalunda. Thank you. Brothers, today we gather to clarify statements which I made at a previous rally. Statements that have been twisted by the media. The Jew-run media. <laughs> now, firstly, I stated that Korean shop owners are vampires. Blood suckers. This generous appraisal has been intricately, surgically misrepresented as an insult. Legends speak of the vampire as a nocturnal creature whose image is not seen in mirrors. So far, so good. <laughs> now, likewise, those who own shops often find that they have to work long hours and late until the night, and as a result, do not have time to reflect upon their accomplishments. <laughs> Smoke screen. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe on your way out. You can catch the live stream of This Is Revolution every Tuesday through Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time and Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific Time. This is Revolution. Revolution.